that. It looks like a little mini doorknob. Narrowing of the vagina. Where were we? Hi everybody, hope you're all okay and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me already, then my name's Nell, I'm 30, I'm newly married and I live in a little cottage in Bolton with my husband Tom and my cat Eric. This is the second part of my cervical cancer story, so if you haven't seen the first part, there should be a little thing above here somewhere where you can click on that and check that video out first and then come back to this one. Today's video I'm just going to be talking about my treatment for cervical cancer and the whole process of freezing my eggs. First of all, if you haven't subscribed already, then hit that subscribe button now and if you have subscribed, thank you so much, it really means a lot. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it or you find it interesting. It just means that I think, <clears throat> I think if you give it a thumbs up it means that more people will get to see it if they are searching for videos like this. So if we just pick up where we left off, I told you about my diagnosis and at my local hospital, that was the most they could do for me there because they knew that my cancer had spread slightly so I needed to be transferred to a specialist hospital and I was very lucky that the Christie in Manchester was about 25 minutes away from where I lived by car. My first appointment with my oncologist was really helpful and it put my mind at rest because she just seemed so confident with um, what she was doing. Whilst cancer was very new to me, she dealt with this every single day and she made me feel really at ease. Um, not only that, the atmosphere at the Christie, you can't really describe it, it is just different to any other hospital. The staff that worked there, from the doctors to the people that were sweeping the corridors, everyone was just so friendly and so kind. My first appointment at the Christie went well. I went with my mum and Tom and I saw my oncologist. She would be the person that would be telling me what my treatment plan would be and be monit monitoring me throughout my treatment to make sure that everything was working the way that it, they expected it should do. So one of the first things I heard was that my cancer was curative, which means that they have the ability to get rid of it and for it not to come back. Obviously, in some cases, it doesn't always work that way because everybody's body's different and everybody responds to treatment in a different way. I was very confident in what the oncologist was telling me and I just, as soon as I got told what my treatment plan was, I just saw it as like, I need to get this done now. What was really upsetting about that appointment was the fact that I was told the treatment I needed would make me infertile and send me into early menopause. So because I was 27 and I hadn't had children yet, they decided to offer me the option of freezing my eggs, which I jumped at because, like I said in my previous video, I'd wanted children by this point for about two years and I just knew I would make a brilliant mum one day. I was basically told that the chemotherapy that I needed would destroy all the eggs in my ovaries and um, basically what happens is when you ovulate every month um, your ovaries send an egg and they sort of, it sort of works like a conveyor belt and you are born with all the eggs that you will ever produce in your body so what the chemo would do is just destroy all of those eggs. She also told me at that point that I needed radiotherapy. What the radiotherapy was going to do is um, basically target the tumour from the outside so it's external beams that target the tumour and make the tumour shrink. But what that meant is that it would destroy that part of my body and make it so that it wouldn't be a healthy environment for a baby to grow. The radiotherapy would stop the blood flow to my womb and uterus and therefore I would never be able to carry my own baby. A baby could not grow in my womb anymore. They told me that, that it was just a fact and couldn't happen. Getting all this information just a few days after being told I had cervical cancer obviously was a massive shock and that's really the only way I can describe it. I just felt numb. But to be told that they were giving me the option to freeze my eggs for future surrogacy meant a lot and it still gave me that bit of hope that one day I can still be a mum. So I just held on to that and I think when you go through any kind of trauma you just try to cling on to the most positive thing. So I knew that my cancer was curable and I knew that I could freeze my eggs and that is what I tried to focus on. So yeah, a week later I had my appointment at the fertility hospital because they can't do 
all the fertility stuff at the cancer hospital. It's treated as two separate things. They knew that my cancer was progressing fast and so they wanted me to start my treatment pretty quickly and we had a six week window for me to have IVF. So I had an initial consultation with the fertility hospital and then I got an appointment made to see a doctor to talk about the whole procedure because usually when you harvest your eggs or you freeze your eggs they will do it vaginally but because of where my tumour was on my cervix they didn't feel comfortable doing it that way and very quickly I was told I'm really sorry Helen but we can't freeze your eggs um, and that was made in such a flippant way by the uh, fertility hospital that I questioned it and I said well why would my oncologist refer me here she knows where my tumour is if it can't be done surely she would have told me that she wouldn't have referred me here and it was only because Tom and I argued it and I was obviously distraught by this point because it was the one thing that I'd really held on to he just said to me we think that it will affect your prognosis if we um, disrupt the tumour and I said well my oncologist said that you can do it through keyhole surgery so what's the issue mm. and I argued it and that made me lose a little bit of trust I thought to myself what the hell is this guy on about he's just told me that I can't freeze my eggs because I was crying about it and questioning it he went away phoned somebody came back and said actually yeah we can do it and I was so angry at that moment in time because I thought I could have just walked away and never had the chance of having children because you've just given me the wrong information but honestly I was so weak at this point mentally and emotionally I didn't complain or anything I just left it and I was just happy that eventually they told me that I could go through with it and freeze my eggs so the way that it was going to happen is I would go through the full IVF treatment I injected a drug called Menopure and I injected a drug called Cetratide uh, boxes and boxes of the stuff and I had to inject into my tummy every morning um, and so it was a really stressful time really because I just I just received my cancer diagnosis I had a six week window to have my eggs frozen and it seems like such an easy process and not many people realize that you have to go through a full cycle of IVF um, to to actually freeze your eggs so you're injecting these hormones into your body every day and it heightens all your emotions and everything because you can imagine when somebody's pregnant they've got their those sort of hormones like that's what's happening to your body I would say that that was probably the most stressful time I went into hospital and I had to have general anaesthetic and they managed to get seven eggs and freeze those eggs for us and we can use those eggs in the future and go through the whole process of surrogacy. The way it will work is they will defrost, if you like, my eggs, take Tom's sperm, fertilise the eggs and make embryos. They will then implant that embryo into our surrogate and that is how we will have a baby when we decide to start a family. The IVF took about four weeks. I had my operation, they got seven eggs. A week later, I started my treatment for cervical cancer. So before my treatment started, I went for three tattoos. So I've got one teeny weeny tattoo here, one teeny weeny tattoo here, and then another one on this side. But every day when I went into radiotherapy, they could measure up exactly where I needed to be on the machine and they knew that they were putting the radiotherapy in the correct place. I was told I needed to have five cycles of chemotherapy once a week 25 sessions of radiotherapy and right at the end i needed something called brachytherapy which i will talk to you about in a little bit i was very lucky because i met an amazing girl at the hospital called natasha and um what was weird about it was she sort of caught my eye in the corridor one day and i was thinking i wonder if she's got the same as me and we kept seeing each other she heard my name being called out for chemo found me on Facebook and started messaging me on Facebook and we've been friends on there ever since and she's doing really well as well so that's brilliant. The chemotherapy that I needed to have was a drug called cisplatin. So usually platinum based chemotherapies apparently make you keep your hair so I didn't lose my hair with my cervical cancer treatment. My period stopped straight away so I went from injecting all of these drugs 
to being menopausal pretty much straight away. This is my original chemo card from back in 2016. <clears throat> I only actually managed to have three of the five chemotherapies because, because my blood cells got too low and I got too poorly from it, if you like. And the way that chemotherapy works is it targets the cancer cells, but it also damages your white blood cells that stop you from getting poorly and your red blood cells, which give you your energy. So I had to have a blood transfusion as well. But I had to fill in these consent forms and I've still got them now. So the first one was for uh, chemotherapy and it looks like this. So it says, um, before you have any treatment, you need to be aware of the proposed benefits and the following side effects to ensure that you are happy to proceed with the treatment. So you get loads and loads of information thrown at you. But it was the only thing that was going to keep me alive so obviously I was going to have chemotherapy. So I did get quite a lot of messages from people telling me about alternative therapies and taking cannabis oil and things like that but I just wanted to listen to the professionals because you'll find that when you get diagnosed with cancer all of a sudden people become nutritionists and oncologists overnight and um, you will be given a lot of advice. I say take the professionals advice. I wouldn't still be here if I didn't have chemotherapy. So it says here, the significant unavoidable and frequently occurring risks, risk of infection, death, anemia, increased risk of bruising, nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, a sore mouth, sensitive skin, tiredness, loss of fertility and early menopause, irritation of veins, sometimes with scarring, um, venous thromboembolism, I don't even know what that means, neuropathy which means that um, you can get tingly hands and feet and I've lost the feeling in the ends of my fingers, aches and pains and then with the radiotherapy it said that the early side effects would um, cause some tiredness which it did, diarrhoea definitely did and cystitis awful cystitis I had. It says this treatment will cause you to be sterile and uh, the early onset of menopause, narrowing of the vagina which is usually preventable. So it just gives you all the sort of risks but there was no way I was going to be turning down chemotherapy, absolutely no way. And so yeah I had all my treatment. I then had a couple of weeks break and then started brachytherapy and I want to talk to you about brachytherapy because I don't feel like pe many people know what it is. It's an internal form of radiotherapy and it's used in a lot of prostate cancers and they use it for cervical cancer as well. And they um, put you to sleep, so you have an operation and you have to stay overnight so no one can stay with you. I remember I watched Miss Congeniality and I had the time of my life because they just kept bringing food to me every five minutes and um, there were nurses sort of like turning me over all the time, rubbing my back and stuff and you're not allowed to move so you have a catheter put in, you are radioactive and the nurses can't come in throughout certain points and I had loads of high doses of radiotherapy once every single hour so they would switch a button on, I would be radioactive and they would tell me not to move. They did it all through the night and all through the day. I then had it all taken out and I needed gas and air for them to take it out of me. So if you imagine your cervix looks like that, it looks like a little mini doorknob. You've got like the little hole in the middle and when they do a smear test they go into that hole and around it. Um, when you have brachytherapy you're put to sleep and they put these metal rods inside of you. One goes up through your cervix and some go around the sides of the cervix to really target the tumour and give it a massive blast of radiotherapy to shrink the bastard. So if you imagine when a woman is in labour, the cervix will um, dilate to 10 centimetres, ready for when the baby's head comes through. Now I've never been in labour so I have no idea what it feels like, but I have quite a high pain threshold, you know, and I swear to God, when I had my rods taken out of me, I cannot describe the pain and some people find it easier than others. Usually people that have already had children find it a little bit easier, um, but no, I found it awful. Um, the rods had something on the end of it that big. You were trying to pull something that big through your cervix, through a hole that is millimetres big. That's what they have to do to pull it out. So you've got to relax. And all I remember is when they pulled everything out, right? I'm lay there with my legs up in stirrups. I felt like I was in labour. I had gas and air and everything. It was horrendous. It was so traumatic. 
and uh, once they'd pulled everything out they were pulling the gauze out and it was full of this yellow stuff that was iodine and they they put that in there to stop infection and then they cleaned the area i just remember saying to the nurse and her laughing her head off because i said oh my god why is it gulping because they were they were cleaning it out with water they were like flushing out that area with water and i was going oh my god oh my god why is why is it gulping why? what what the actual hell have they done to me what have they done down there um yeah and i could hardly walk for a few days and yeah it was a bad time i'll be honest but it's all over now i went into menopause really really quickly so i started with the hot flushes which always seemed to happen every time i was in tesco for some reason my bladder was also damaged and my bowel was damaged and i still have those side effects now i also developed lymphedema in my legs because once my radiotherapy had finished they could tell that the cancer had gone into my lymph nodes slightly in my pelvis um, and they could only tell that because of the way that my lymph nodes looked after cancer treatment because radiotherapy targets those cancer cells so they pretty much looked fried on my scan so they knew that there were, must have been some rogue cells in my pelvic lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are part of your lymphatic system and when your lymphatic system isn't working properly you get some swelling in your legs and that's definitely what's happened to me. I pretty much don't have an ankle anymore. I'm definitely mentally scarred from having cervical cancer and um, going through something so traumatic like that at such a young age and losing your fertility is horrendous there are no two ways about it but generally i'm okay and my checkups ever since for cervical cancer have been great so coming on here and telling everybody about what happened one feels very liberating and two just feels like i'm talking to my friends because i know that all the people that are watching this are going to take something positive away from it i just do um whether it's encouragement to go and have your smear test or whether it's that you've been diagnosed yourself or you've been through it yourself and you can relate to some of the things that i'm saying it definitely makes it worthwhile for me to make this video yes i've discussed some embarrassing things but do you know what i couldn't have helped what happened to me and for a long time I was genuinely upset that I felt people were looking at me and all they could see was cancer or that's that poor girl with cancer and they couldn't see past it and what actually I am all about but there is so much more to me than cancer Um it's a big part of my life and it will always be. I'll definitely be touching on my experience more in the future I'm talking about my mental health, anxiety, I'm definitely going to do an anxiety video soon and everything that I learned from having cognitive behavioural therapy so if you'd be interested in seeing a video like that definitely stick around uh, yeah so that's just a little bit about the egg freezing process and my treatment plan don't forget my next video will be me answering all questions to do with this topic so if you have any questions for me please leave them in the comments down below alternatively you can send me a message over on instagram i will leave my instagram here somewhere and yeah thank you very much for watching everybody and i will see you in my next one bye